What is the state of the HVAC industry? I did a video similar to this years ago where I kind of talked about the state of the industry, talked about upcoming predictions. I don't even know if I was writing those, but in this video, I want to do the same. If you're looking at buying a heating and air system anytime soon, especially this year, I want to go through some industry trends that we're seeing, some things going on, some things that you might want to know about and possible things in the future. I think it's important for you to know some of these things before you spend thousands of dollars. One thing that I'm seeing, it seems to be a huge thing right now, and that is with the state of the industry being what it is about some of the things we're going to talk about, we're going to see more and more customers waiting. And because of that, that, I think we might just see another down year. 2023 was known across the industry as being a down year with 2022 being such a high year in comparison. 2023 was down. Numbers were down. I think there's a number of reasons for that, weather being one of them, but now we're down to the haywire here. We're, we're down to the last days, if you will. If folks can hang on a little bit longer before spending money on that new system and go ahead and get those new refrigerants, they're thinking about doing that. They don't know what the price of 410A refrigerant is going to be in the future. So they're deciding, well, I'm going to see what my options are when these new systems with new refrigerants start coming out. More and more customers are waiting. They're buying time, whether it's band-aiding a system or just limping along what they have when they would normally go ahead and pull the trigger and buy a new heating and air system we are seeing more and more folks wait. And a big part of that is the new refrigerants that are coming. Unless something changes, the EPA is saying that by January 1st, 2025, a lot of the systems that we see sold today with 410A equipment are going to be obsolete. That the equipment being sold with 410A refrigerant in them will no longer be allowed to be sold. And that by default will mean we're gonna see equipment coming out that's going to have these new A2L refrigerants in them. A lot of folks are concerned about that. I don't know that it matters at this point. I think we're down to the haywire here. New refrigerants are coming. I'm being told that prices will rise with those. I don't necessarily understand why. We're being told that at least some of these refrigerants are gonna have better efficiencies, better capabilities than 410A, meaning less refrigerant is going to be able to perform better than the same amount of refrigerant in 410A. A system that needed 10 pounds of refrigerant to do the job might now only need six pounds, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. New refrigerants, new pricing, new equipment, all coming next year. And that plays right into another reason I think we just had a down year, and that is inflation. We haven't seen the type of inflation just as a country since the 70s that we've been seeing. It's affected multiple industries. It's affected even grocery store prices and regular goods and so on. And the HVAC industry is no different. I can tell you that my company just last year we had a price increase, two months later, another price increase, and then a month later, another price increase. It was like bang, bang, bang. And I don't think that we're going to see a big bubble burst like you would see with the housing industry or the stock market or anything like that. I don't know that you're going to see necessarily a bubble burst and prices come down, but what it might do is force these companies to be a little more creative, come out with some more budget-friendly products. I know that my company, we sold Daikin, and Daikin came out with the Daikin Fit. It was a more budget-friendly inverter system. Customers were able to get a high-efficiency inverter system that they could save money on their electric bills, but then they could also get a more budget-friendly option. A lot of those inverter systems might be a bigger investment, and this was a way for them to get into a high-efficiency system without breaking the bank. Please note that Daikin has sponsored some of the content on our YouTube channel, and the FTC requires that I disclose that. But I think you're going to see more of that. You're going to see companies trying to come out with more budget-friendly options. Or if they can't come out with more budget-friendly options, then they'll go the other route and come out with options that are just simply more efficient. Options that you can install the system and then your utility bills are way lower and then it makes sense. But something's got to give here because homeowners are just waiting. It's down market last year think we're going to see another down market this year, and this is part of it. And then finally, if we're talking about the state of the industry, something we saw this past year that I think is going to continue as we go through this next year, and that is furnaces and other fossil fuel burning 
equipment becoming the enemy of those in charge. So they're taking aim at furnaces. They're saying that they either need to be more efficient. They may be doing away with them. Some states are trying to do away with them entirely. The federal government has been taking a closer look at them, introducing bills and direction and so on. Obviously, there's always more than one opinion there, but there are opinions out there trying to get folks to do more electrification, to do more heat pump options out there, to introduce heat pumps into markets that couldn't really even operate before. Now you're seeing systems that can work in low ambient temperatures, still producing heating into very cold temperatures. And even if they aren't necessarily banning furnaces, I could see it possible where they just simply incentivize folks to go more of an electric option, heat pumps, electrification, more rebates, more incentives, more ways to get folks to consider that option when maybe they didn't even consider it before. Do I think that furnaces will become obsolete this next year? No, but do I think that there could come a day where they do become a whole lot more rare? I think it's possible. We're already seeing it in other countries, countries that are usually ahead of us, a little ahead of the curve. We're able to look at them and see the future, sometimes see where we're heading, and that is happening in other countries. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you concerned about any of the things we talked about? Are you hanging on to your current system because of all these changes? I'd love to hear about that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this video even more. It's where we talk about some of the secrets about heat pumps that some don't want you to know. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.